inputs I have Rajya Sabha MP of the BJP Dr. Subramanian Swami joining us live this evening on India Front. Good evening, sir. This is Anand Narsiman here. I am quoting a passage, sir, yes. from not just what Mr. Yogendra Narayan has said that P.V. Narsimha Rao was aware that there was a mandir under the masjid. But this is a passage from the front line citing Madhav Godbole. And this is what P.V. Narsimha Rao said to his media advisor, P.V. R.K. Prasad. He says, the solution is possible by entrusting Ram Temple construction to a representative and apolitical committee comprising of all Hindu heads of Mats and Peethams, representing a whole cross-section of Hindus. Further down in the passage, he is quoted saying, legal settlement by the courts may not be received peacefully and might be difficult to implement. So he is, P.V. Narsimha Rao said, let the BJP, who are the BJP? Do they think they own Ram? BJP behaves as if Ram is its property. When we say Congress is a secular party, it doesn't mean we are atheists. Lord Ram is our God as well. We pray to him just as they do. How far are they justified in hoodwinking people and monopolizing Lord Ram? They played a game, sir. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, my response is this, that first of all, you must know that Narsimha Rao and I were friends for a long time. I was, in fact, holding a cabinet position uh, as the chairman of the uh, GATT Commission, as it was called, dealing with WTO uh, during his uh, tenure. And when the Babri Masjid uh, uh, demolition was happening, I, I spent hours with him. Uh, I would say the, more, the documented truth is the following. The Supreme Court asked Narsimha Rao government in 1994, 1993 or so, uh, after the demolition, what is your solution to this problem? And uh, he was asked to file an affidavit. So the Solicitor General filed an affidavit, which is reproduced in the Supreme Court's uh, judgment, Faruqi versus the Union of India, published in the Supreme Court uh, uh, Journal, uh, SCC, uh, in 1994, where the Narsimha Rao government says that it is ever proved that there was a pre-existing, not a demolition, but a pre-existing temple uh, to the masjid, that is, that there was a temple before a masjid, then we will hand over this land to the Hindus. In my opinion, that is sufficient for the Supreme Court or the, any government to immediately hand over the government land which is mostly under the central government uh, authority. It was taken off, uh, it was nationalized during that period and except for a small disputed area where they, we hold that Ram was born, the rest of it belongs to the government. So the, any government acting on this commitment on affidavit, sworn affidavit of the Congress government of Narsimha Rao should have handed this land for building a temple. And all this delay was totally unnecessary. No, not just that, Dr. Swami. Mr. P.V. Narsimha Rao always knew there was a mandir, sir. The Congress party, not just Mr. P.V. Narsimha Rao, yes. the other leaders who are even leaders yes. right now were aware that there was always a mandir. They played this game saying let That's the right. BJP demolish the masjid and we will then later on build the mandir. Brand the BJP communal win over the Hindus. This was the political game that was played. Yeah, well, it is uh, clearly was a political game and the BJP walked into it. But in a sense, I will also add what the Chief uh, Principal Secretary to Kalyan Singh said, that basically the leaders who are today being prosecuted had no idea that this was going to be broken. The mob just went berserk. You, uh, uh, you assemble three, four lakh people in a highly emotive stage. You can't expect them uh, to be controlled uh, with only a riffraff uh, uh, police uh, of, uh, of the UP government. Uh, and that time, Manarsimha Rao could have easily uh, moved the army if he wanted. It would have been a lot of bloodshed. But he didn't want to do it. He told me, I will not do it. I will not shoot the sadhus, let the masjid be demolished and then we will have no more a problem and we can start afresh. 
I think Narsimha Rao, if he had been elected in 1996, he would have definitely built the temple. No, 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 not just that. But that was a game, Dr. Swami. That's what I'm coming to arrive at. Because P. V. Narsimha Rao never took the Muslims yes. into confidence. He never outed and made the ASI report yes. public. He never told the Hindus that there exists a yes. mandir and there can be an amicable solution arrived at. Because if facts prove that there is indeed a Vishnu well, Hari temple, then there is no reason that the communities could not have solved it. They deliberately allowed the demolition to I take place. I have to make one correction. Yes, sir. The ASI report predates not only Narsimha Rao, predates Rajiv Gandhi. Yes. It was in 1976 when B. V. Lal found yes. that there was in fact remains of the temple. Yes. If you had gone to the Babri Masjid, you would have seen the pillars were all from temples. Yes. It was a, o, o, open, uh, you know, available. Uh, the site was available to open naked eye. Hmm. So Mrs. Gandhi knew. Na, Moraji Desai knew, uh, again Mrs. Gandhi in, uh, came back, she knew, Rajiv Gandhi knew, Rajiv Gandhi was sympathetic, but his party was holding him by his coattails, and uh, Narsimha Rao also knew, that's true, and they were, uh, they were just uh, playing about with it, and uh, blaming the BJP for it, but the fact of the matter is that everybody knew that there was an existing temple which was demolished and a, and a masjid was built. So who betrayed the people of this country, sir? Was this, not, was this country not betrayed? Congress. Absolutely. If uh, there would have been never a uh, Babri Masjid demolition, and if this confrontation, had, uh, this fact had been told to the Muslim mullahs, their own Quran says you can't build uh, in a disputed area a masjid. And they would have agreed to shift it could have been solved uh, the, uh, much earlier. Uh, once the uh, Babri Masjid was broken, of course, there, were, uh, there was a lot of emotional upheaval and it's taken so much time to cool it down now. No, sir, because my last question to you, Dr. Swami, you, you went back to the 70s, I'm going back to 1961 when the Sunni Central Work Board filed a case against placing of the idols inside the mosque and claimed that the mosque and surrounding land was a graveyard. They made this claim but despite Bibi Lal and KK Mahamad coming out and stating those facts in 76 and 77 and 78, the Congress party never told them the fact, the truth. It was not a graveyard. Yes, that is true. There, that is a Congress appeasement all through. I, I'm, I'm telling you uh, how the Congress reacted when uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi's government said that uh, the, the locks on the Babri Masjid can be opened. He was condemned throughout, uh, but he, he, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, whom I, I also knew, told me very clearly that there was a, uh, there is a temple under. Sooner or later, this has to become a temple, and that's why he allowed the Shilanyas also to take place of the uh, VHP in 1989. So uh, and he allowed the uh, serial of Ramayan to be shown on Doordarshan, which every party member of his had objected to. So, I, I think this, uh, this whole tragedy could have been averted if, uh, if in 1949 itself when the uh, idols were placed, if uh, Jawaharlal Nehru had listened to Pandit Panth, who was then the Chief Minister of UP. No, this whole tragedy could have been averted. Yes, rightly so, sir. And many others, that was a fallout of this Babri Masjid demolition could also have been averted because the game that was afoot was afoot in the Congress echelons. That's what we are trying to arrive at here, based on what yes. the former Principal Secretary to the former UPCM has just revealed in his book. Dr. Subramanian Swami, thank you for joining us here on yes. India Upfront. We take a very short break. The debate. Welcome back, and we dive.